In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at another budget brand right here on the Tequila Ombre coming up next. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Tequila Ombre, where today we're going to be taking a look at another budget brand. And the budget brand we're looking at today is called Cimarron. This was requested by one of our viewers. It's a very popular budget brand that you can find all around the place. And uh, if it's good, we'll uh, add it to ferment and still to make it easier for you to find as well. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get into talking about how the tequila is made. Now, Cimarron is made at NOM 1146, which if you're familiar with Artenom Selection 1146, it's the same distillery that makes that as well as uh, the Cierto. They make the Pura, Pura Sangre, uh, as well as the Fuente Seca lines. They make a lot of really good tequila out of 1146. It's Enrique Fonseca is the, the master distiller and owner of the distillery. Now, this tequila brand originally was made uh, for restaurant use and bar use as a mixer uh, and came in liter bottles, but now it's out in 750 milliliter bottles. These both are 750 milliliter bottles. And the pricing on both of these, you can get each bottle for below $30 right now. So it's not a bad price point on them. But let's uh, talk a little bit about how, how this is made. Now, of course, the agave for this are grown up in Atatinoco in the rancho uh, for Enrique Fonseca. So they typically get a, a bricks level between 24 and 26 bricks. So they're high sugar level agaves that they use. They drive them down the tequila to where the distillery is, and then they process them, of course, and they slow roast them in an autoclave. Once the, they're finished being cooked, they then use a roller mill and screw mill to extract the sugars from the agave fibers. And then it is fermented in stainless steel tanks using wine yeast. After fermentation is complete, it is then distilled in a column still, which is like a vodka still, uh, and then bottled at 40% ABV uh, in both Blanco. And then they're aged, uh, the repo is aged, and we'll talk about the aging of the repo here in just a little bit when we get to the tasting portion. But right now, let's get into the tasting portion of the Blanco and see what it's all about. All right, let's get into the Blanco tasting. And of course, uh, it is a screw cap on this. Uh, that's best for restaurants and uh, bars because then they can put their pouring spouts inside and use that to pour for cocktails. So this was really meant to be a mixing mixer and geared towards the restaurant and bar industries. But of course, people like to sip it, so they make it so you can get it as a sipper too. All right, so looking at this in the glass, it doesn't coat the glass really well. It, but you see lots of you know, pearls and stuff on it. So it's lacking a little body, but hey, it doesn't matter as long as it tastes good, right? And when they're using it for cocktails, they're not really looking for body anyways. So on the nose, really nice cooked agave and uh, notes coming through. I get that beautiful sweet cinnamon and baking spices. A little hint of citrus in there as well. It smells nice. It smells nice. It smells um, more floral. Definitely on the floral side. Okay, so let's see what we get on the flavor profile. So this could be my first sip of a tequila for the day. So I'm going to, of course, acclimate in my mouth first. All right, salute. It's a little thin on the mouthfeel. Getting some 
sweet cinnamon notes up front, followed by a little hint of anise afterwards. This has a little heat to it. So there is a burning on the tongue on it. <clears throat> and then you get this kind of a caramelized sugar chocolate note that kind of comes on at the end of it. Nice cooked agave cinnamon, sweet cinnamon note on the front. Some anise bitterness that comes in. And then, of course, that caramelized sugar chocolate note on the end. And the heat. And you get a little heat on the tongue. There's, there's not a whole lot to this. <clears throat> but they're really not looking for complexity when they're making a mixing uh, tequila. They're looking for something that'll hold up in, in cocktails and stuff, which this will do. It is thin on the mouthfeel, not a whole lot to it. Still have a fair, fairly amount of heat that's available to you. And if you're a whiskey drinker and you're used to having stuff that's a little more um, hot, then this wouldn't wouldn't bother you at all. But flavor wise, it's kind of mild. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, it would make great margaritas and be great for cocktails. But as far as a sipper, as a budget um, brand. It's good. There's nothing wrong with it at all. But there's other ones out there like the Pueblo Viejo and stuff, which I actually would prefer more. So, but um, I would give this a solid three agave for this particular um, Blanco. And for, you know, just under 30 bucks, it's not a bad deal. You can, if you're looking for something cheap and you want to either age it or sip something inexpensive, this would be a good option. It's not great. It's not the best option, but there's nothing wrong with it at all. All right, so let's jump into the Reposado and see what we get with the Reposado. All right, so now we're going to jump into the Cimarron Reposado, which is aged in American white oak barrels for less than a year, um, between between two months and a year. I don't know the exact time. I couldn't find anything on the exact time it sits in the barrel and probably changes depending on what they get out of the barrel. But it is aged in, in American white oak barrels. And we'll go ahead and put the top back on. So... Um, Let's take a look at this one in the glass. <clears throat> this one coats the glass a little better because it got the barrel stuff that comes in there. So it's, you see the legs and tears starting to form on the top there and coming down. So it looks like the Reposado is going to have a little more viscous mouthfeel to it than the Blanco did. Looking at the tequila itself, it's crystal clear, a light straw color, even light amber. Not a whole lot of color to it, a little bit. On the nose, you get that sweet cinnamon uh, cooked agave note that comes through, some baking spices, and then little hints of vanilla and caramel coming through on the nose. Not a whole lot to it. It's not super complex, but what do you expect for a budget brand, right? I mean, seriously. But it smells nice. It smells, it smells floral as well, just like the Blanco did. All right, so let's see what we get on the flavor profile. Salute. Get a nice cinnamon note up front, followed by that anise bitterness that comes after it. A little hint of vanilla, and then not much else, honestly. But it's not bad. There's nothing bad about this at all. It's definitely can be enjoyable. It would make good Palomas, for sure, if you're looking for something as a mixer. As a sipper for below 30 bucks, you can find a better Reposado, I believe, for for less in the Pueblo Viejo. That's one of my favorite um, lines, the Pueblo Viejo, as far as um, budget goes. This one's not bad, though, so if you want to get it, get it. Um, I would rate this one a three agave as well. Three agave. It's not bad. Um, it's not great. And for below, below 30 bucks, if you're looking for something cheap, you're on a budget, and you just want something that's... Um, easy to drink and uh, light flavor profile. This would fit the bill. So there you go. There's my review of Cimarron. If you like the information I shared in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, bienvenido, welcome. And hopefully this information was helpful for you and you can as well find some other great reviews on the channel. 
But if you'd like to be notified every time we post a new review or informational video, make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it. So you get notified every time we post a new review or informational video. And so then you can have the knowledge to know when you go into the liquor store, what tequilas to buy so you don't make any mistakes and end up with great quality tequila. And like I always say, life is too short to drink bad tequila. So, hey, if you wanted to pick up the Cimarron, it's not bad. Go ahead. But there's other budget brands that I actually prefer more. Salute. Bye, guys.